Support for this podcast and the following message come from Money Mind from Prudential, a podcast powered by your financial behavior. Hear insights from financial psychologists, experts, and more. Download and subscribe to Money Mind wherever you find podcasts, and learn more at slate.com slash moneymind. Are you looking for another great way to listen to Ask Me Another? You should check out NPR One. It's an app for your phone, kind of like Pandora, but for public radio. It's full of news and stories from your favorite podcasters, NPR, and the local station you call your own. So whenever you're ready to listen, NPR One has something great just for you. Find it on your app store, NPR One. From NPR and WNYC, coming to you from the Bell House in beautiful Brooklyn, New York, it's NPR's Hour of Puzzles, Word Games, and Trivia, Ask Me Another. I'm Julian Villard. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Julian. Jonathan Colton is out this week. He's training to become a Pokemon monster. But we are so glad to welcome back Julian with his trusty keyboard. And we have a great show for you. We have four brilliant contestants who are backstage right now waiting to play our nerdy games. But only one will be our big winner. And our special guests are Gillian Jacobs and Kate Micucci from the movie Don't Think Twice, which explores the world of improv comedy. And as a stand-up, watching this movie made me so jealous because improvisers just seem happy. I actually dated an improviser for a while, and it was pretty exhausting because all day long he just asked for suggestions. He was like, can I get an object? How about a location? I was like, how about my feelings? We didn't break up. Just one day I called, scene, and I got my money back. Let's get things started with our first two contestants. First up, Jake Toffler. You work for a medical tech startup. And you have a knack for winning things. <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, pretty lucky. Um, a few weeks ago, I actually won the Hamilton Lottery. Oh. Yeah. oh. oh. Wow. Oh. I know, that's better now than the real lottery. Uh, yeah, <laughs> almost. <laughs> um, I've also won a 60-inch uh, TV, uh, a free cruise, and a year of free Chipotle. Free? Oh. How did you win the television, for example? I went to Duke, and I was a big basketball fan. Uh huh. Uh, and they had a sign competition before our big rival, UNC. I made a sign that said, "I'm hopping, Duke will win," and I was wearing a giant bunny mask. And I happened to be right uh, dead center in the uh, in the shot where they had the four anchors talking about the game upcoming, and I was jumping up and down the whole time <laughs> with my sign. You know what? You deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> Your opponent is Viola Huang. You are a surgical resident currently researching how to improve liver transplants. Yes. We are all impressed. So based on your research on livers, how... <laughs> how are you treating your own liver, first of all? Pretty good, actually. Pretty good? Once you start seeing what it looks like inside, you start taking care of yourself better. Although I still eat fries, so I guess that kind of... Oh, that's a problem, right? Yeah. Right. Now that you've seen the liver, what's one tip you can give our, our listening audience on how to improve their liver health? I mean, don't drink, but you guys are all... <laughs> yeah. I mean, other than that, other than that. <laughs> Just take care of yourself. Stay healthy, exercise, hydrate. I mean, the liver does so much for the body. It's such an important organ. Yeah. And people are, think the heart is so sexy, but I think the liver is the most, the coolest organ. Yeah. So the first of you who wins two games is going to move on to our final round at the end of the show. Your first challenge is called I'm So Excited, and in this trivia game, every answer contains everyone's favorite overused punctuation mark. The exclamation point, right? That's how you make text seem like you're actually happy. <laughs> For an example of what you're going to do, let's go to our puzzle guru, Archung. If I said this Best Picture Oscar winner was based on Charles Dickens' novel about a poor orphan, you'd answer, Oliver. Uh, and I'm going to ask you to do something very unbrooklyn like and that is feign enthusiasm. <laughs> when you give your answer, give us the full force of the exclamation point. All right, here we go. <laughs> It's the Shania Twain song I'm channeling when I say, 
Whoa, ho, ho, I want to be free to feel the way I feel. Man, I feel like a woman. Yes, my own. Yes. The title character of this Nick tune was often called Football Head, not because he had a concussion, but because his head was shaped like a football. Jake. Hey, Arnold. <laughs> yes, indeed. I've never seen it, but it must be confusing when he plays football. That's all I have to say. It's the corporation that owns such artery-clogging favorites as Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, and KFC. Viola. Yum. I don't know. We'll take that. It was Yum Brands. Yeah. You have to know that from your research, right? Yeah, no, we have a blacklist of, you know, all the... (laughs) (laughs) This Comedy Central show was set in a Nevada city that was once home to the world's longest domestic cat and the world record for the most simultaneous checker games. Jake. Reno 911. Yes. All right. Who cares about this show? Let's just discuss the world's longest domestic cat for the rest of the time we have here. It would be very NPR. That would be very NPR, just an entire expose. In this Dr. Seuss book, an elephant saves a tiny planet from being boiled in bezel nut oil because a person's a person no matter how small. Jake. Horton, here's a who. Yeah! The final film in Baz Luhrmann's Red Curtain trilogy, it featured Nicole Kidman and Ewan McGregor ruining songs you love. <laughs> Viola. Oh, shoot. I knew it in the knife. <laughs> Hold on. It's like the f- French. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, yep. I, I have it. <laughs> I like what you're saying. <laughs> keep, keep it going. Oh, God. For some reason, I'm blanking, but okay. I, can, I can see the scenery, the... All, all that. I believe I just you. Got, I believe I got you. nothing. <laughs> Jake, can you steal? Well, I don't know it, but she said French, so I'm going to go with Moulin Rouge. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yes, you are correct. And I like it, Jake, but let's pretend that I like, really we didn't know, know it. I know you know it. All I right. Re- I, I really <laughs> didn't know it. You don't need this justification that you don't watch that continuously in a loop while you work out, all right? All right, this is your last clue. Starring Leslie Nielsen, this movie is a spoof of the 1957 movie Zero Hour, which also ends with an exclamation point. Jake. Airplane. Airplane is correct. Let's go to our puzzle guru, Archung. How did our contestants do? Congratulations, Jake. You're one step closer to moving on to the final round. All right, let's check in with our contestants. Jake, what is the most embarrassing thing you've ever had to Google? Well, last night, actually, after I ate some pork, I Googled what undercooked pork looks like. (laughs) But I'm still here. I made it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Viola, what's the most embarrassing thing you've ever Googled? So I'm a doctor, but I will still go to Google and put in symptoms and kind of see what turns up. So... (laughs) But I think I've, I like to think that I'm more methodical about what I actually trust. <laughs> so you're saying that Googling your ailments actually is uh, a responsible way to get an answer or it's accurate? Actually, no. Most of the time it's terrible and I don't trust any of it. But you still do it. I don't know why. I think yeah, it's just yeah. like a... It's usually things that aren't my discipline. Okay, so obviously people ask Google a lot of weird questions. Uh, and you've noticed that when you start typing those questions that a lot of times you get weird autocomplete suggestions by Google. So in this game, we are going to give you the beginning of a question and three possible options as to how Google chose to autocomplete it for us <laughs> as of this taping, because it changes all the time. Okay, so one choice is real, the other two are made up. We're going to alternate back and forth, no need to buzz in. If you guess incorrectly, your opponent can steal. Jake, you are in the lead since you won the last game, so if you win this, you are moving to the final round. Viola, you need to win this or you will be deleted from the internet. (laughs) That's okay, I'm already not on it very much. Okay, here we go. Jake, where can you see A, a unicorn, B, a solar eclipse, C, a good doctor? 
I'm going to go with A, a unicorn. Interesting choice, but incorrect. Viola, what do you think it is? A, unicorn, B, a solar eclipse, C, a good doctor. C, a good doctor. Both of you are wrong because those things aren't real. The answer is... The answer is a solar eclipse. <laughs> Viola, what's the movie with A, the guy who was in that thing, B, the dinosaurs, C, Helen Hunt? A, the guy who was in that thing? I'm sorry, that is incorrect. <laughs> Jake? I'm going to go with B, the dinosaurs. dinosaurs. That is correct, yes. The <laughs> Jake, is there any way to get out of A, a car loan, B, a corn maze, C, jail? I really hope it's C, jail. That is incorrect. I'm sorry, Viola, can you choose the right answer? A, a car loan, or B, a corn maze we are down to? Car loan. Carlone is correct. Yes. <laughs> Viola, how often should I A pray B pump C poop? C poop. Interesting. Incorrect. It's cuz <laughs> Jake, it's either pray or pump. Pray. Incorrect. <laughs> the answer is pump. Jake, what does it mean when you dream about A, being naked, B, teeth, or C, Tetris? B, teeth. That is correct. <laughs> Viola, why does it A, make that noise, B, matter anyway, <laughs> or C, feel so good? <laughs> B. I'm sorry. That is incorrect. That's exactly what I would ask Google. <laughs> that is... But no, Jake, can you steal? Is it make that noise or feel so good? Feel so good. Yes, it is. It feels so good. Puzzle Art Chung, how did our contestants do? I'm afraid we'll have to say goodbye to Viola, but congratulations, Jake. You're moving on to the final round at the end of the show. Up, we'll find out who will face off against Jake in our final round at the end of the show. Plus, we put Julian Villard in a high pressure situation, parroting his hero, Billy Joel. And the tables turn when Julie and I meet a mystery man, making it our turn to solve a puzzle. So stay tuned. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. <laughs> Support for this podcast and the following message comes from Fifth Generation, maker of Tito's Handmade Vodka. Tito Beverage, yes, that is his real name, incorporates the concepts of artisan craftsmanship found in boutique wineries into the spirits industry to create Tito's Handmade Vodka. And Tito still uses the time-honored pot-still-batch distillation process at the original distillery where he started it all in Austin, Texas. Tito's Handmade Vodka is made from corn and is naturally gluten-free. Support for this podcast and the following message comes from NerdWallet. NerdWallet makes it fast and easy to find a credit card that works for you. With hundreds of different cards to choose from and offers ranging from cashback bonuses, travel rewards to low rates and more. Their personalized tools let you compare more than 1,700 credit cards in seconds and apply instantly online. And their financial experts give straightforward, no hype reviews to help you find a better card. So learn more at nerdwallet.com slash ask me. This is Ask Me Another, NPR's Hour of Puzzles, Word Games, and Trivia. I'm Julian Villard, here with puzzle guru Art Chung. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Julian. Now, before the break, our contestant Jake won his way to the final round, but we're going to find out a little later who he will face off against. But first, we have a game called Mystery Guest, 
A stranger is about to come onto our stage. Julian and I have no idea what this person does or what makes them special, but only our puzzle guru, Art Chung, knows the answer. That's right, I do. Our mystery guest today is responsible for a hot new food trend. Mystery guest, please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Darren Wong. So what's interesting about Darren is that his food creation looks like something else. So your job is to tell us what his creation is and what it looks like. Both things. You and Julian will have to ask yes or no questions to figure it out. Okay. Is your food creation made out of meat? No. Is it made out of bread? No. <laughs> That's it. That's it? <laughs> All right. Uh, is it like a sculpture? Yeah, I'd say that, yeah. Okay, all right. Is it a vegetable sculpture? Oh, um, I'm going to go with yes. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, plant-based is what yeah. we said? Yeah, Pla plant-based plant is a vegetable. Right, it's so, so like vegetable, animal, mineral, vegetable. It's, it's not right. meat. <laughs> as <we're supposed laughs> no. Would I recognize it as a plant? Nope. What? Is it seasonal? Like, can you only eat it in a certain season? Well, I've only been in business for one season. Where'd you find this guy, Art? <laughs> <laughs> Ask him how big is it, maybe. Yeah, all right. Is it bigger than a bread box? What's a bread box? I don't know what a bread box is. <laughs> uh, is it bigger? I can, you, I can give you a big clue. Give me a big it's about, clue. It's about the size of a boob. It's about the size of a boob? Is that what you just said? <laughs> Whose boob? Whose boob? God, I don't, maybe, I think... maybe a question of either its uh, color or its consistency. Does it look like a boob? <laughs> yes. All right. A lot of people have said that. A lot of people say it looks like a boob. Is it pinkish, flesh colored? No. Is it look like a like a ghost, like a like a Pokemon or something? I don't know. <laughs> it is. It is clear. Okay. It is clear. Weird. Right, I think we're going to give you one question each. That's a pretty big hint. It is clear. And it's the size of a. Medium boob. Uh, what's some? Oh, it, I, I guess jelly is see-through. Maybe it's made of jelly. It's a jelly. What? It's a jelly. It's a jelly. All right, okay. Julian. One more question. Is it a clear marshmallow basketball thing? <laughs> I don't. Really? I was on to something close. Yeah, yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah, of, I think it's pretty close, of, but I, we can't give there. it to you. But Darren, can you please explain your food creation? Um, I make the raindrop cake. Oh! oh my God! I've seen you on television. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Darren. For our listeners at home, please explain what the raindrop cake is. So, raindrop cake is made out of agar, which is a seaweed. So that's where the plant comes right, from. Right, right. I would have And it looks that. clear. looks like a giant raindrop. Some people think it looks like a boob. Sure. And what made you decide, like, how did you come to create this thing? Um, I originally saw it in Japan, and I was sort of inspired. And I thought that it would be a really cool sort of trendy New York uh, food item. I thought people would eat it up. And, you were right. Um, yeah. So how are sales? Uh, pretty good. Can pretty you keep good. up with them? Um, yes. I, I have a kitchen, and I can make... Thousands in a week. And, and is your background as a, are you like a pastry person or a no, chef? No, I'm, I used to be in advertising. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, yeah, yeah. And because it doesn't taste like anything, you serve it with? Well, um, whatever toppings we want to put on it. So it's a matcha sauce or a brown sugar sauce or um, mm. roasted soybean flowers. So it's kind of nutty and sweet. And the best part is it's calorie free. Except for the topics. <laughs> <laughs> right, he's silent. He's like, uh, well, yeah, yeah, sure it is, sure it is. Uh, give it up for our special guest, Raindrop Cake Man, Darren Wong. Let's meet our next two contestants. First up, Ross Freilich. You work in mergers and acquisitions, and you just got back from a trip to an island north of the Arctic Circle. That's correct. Is it the island of misfit toys? <laughs> No toys, no Santa, just Norwegians. Norwegians. <laughs> so what made you want to go to this particular island? 
had a trip planned to Norway and yeah. wanted to go to the most adventurous place that uh, we could figure out. And what's on the island, other than Norwegians? Just midnight sun, cool hiking. How long were you there? Uh, just over a week. And you're back how long? I guess two weeks now. Yeah, how's it feel? Work is a real hard reality sometimes. <laughs> it sure is. Yeah. Your opponent is Scott Wotanik. You are a printer wholesaler, but apparently you're mistaken for a vampire quite often. Uh, I'd love to talk to you about your printer business, but let's get to this vampire <laughs> stuff. Is it because you drink blood? Uh, my first job out of college, I worked at a, my neighborhood youth center, and my neighbor's kids were there, and they always called me the pale one. Um, cause I'm, I'm kind of pale. My, the teeth next to my, my incisors are pointy. It's a recessive gene. I have dark circles under my eyes. I don't go out in the sun. So they kind of started a rumor. So everyone's like, is he a vampire? So those kids that believed it, I kind of would lean on that and get them to behave. And if not, time out works. So, <laughs> so you actually went with it. You're like, yeah, I am yeah, a vampire. Go with what you know. <laughs> You're in for some great fun. Do you like Billy Joel? Of course. Scott? I've heard of him. Okay. <laughs> you might be a vampire. You might be a vampire. <laughs> I have heard of him. Uh, all right. Well, I'm glad you sort of like him or have heard of him. Otherwise, this would be a pretty long game for you. Uh, Julian Villard, take it away. Uh, we've taken Billy Joel's song, Pressure, and rewrote it to be about things that react to pressure. Uh, so buzz in when you know the thing I'm talking about. Okay, here we go. You have a big job interview. Pressure. A good impression is what's due. Pressure. No time to dry clean. You must act alone. Now here you stand at the board With your iron getting hot Time to demand smooth reward Make these items talk with pressure Scott Ironing your clothes? Puzzle Guru Archung? We'll accept that. Wrinkled clothes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Do you iron your clothes? No, I, I don't. Uh, I just tumble everything until it looks decent, and then it goes on a hanger, and then that's how it stays. Okay. <laughs> Scott, you're super weird to talk to, but I really enjoy it. <laughs> I, I get that a lot. <laughs> this instrument is where the gear pressure measuring in the atmosphere Pressure! Ross. A barometer. Yes! <laughs> it doesn't matter if you know this or not, but if the barometer says low pressure, do you know what that means? Or you're like, oh, I should wear a hat. Like, do you know what that means? Storm's coming. Storms are coming. <laughs> All right. High pressure, what's happening? Nice weather. God, thank you, Ross. <laughs> my voice is changing and my act. Knees gross Can't drive a car Hormones rage No one's asked me to the prom Can't hit the bar Under age No, I can't stay calm There's pressure Ross Teenagers That's right <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right Red cells carry Oxygen round White cells fight The infections on sounds All your life It's mostly unseen Arteries, veins What does it mean? Scott? Circulatory system? Yeah, we'll take that. We're looking for blood. Yeah. Trying to hide behind that question, I'm familiar Scott. with blood. <laughs> Designed to pull a sneak attack. Pressure. Though now they're easier to track. Pressure. 
Deep in the ocean there are time numbers Torpedoes fire, crew can see Looking through the periscope But it's not dire, cause the key Is the hull can cope with pressure Ross A submarine That is perfect, of course it is All right, Puzzleger or Chung, that seemed like a very close game. It was a very close game. Congratulations to Ross. You're one step closer to the final round. Julian Ballard. All right, contestants, good, good show. Good show on that game. Well done. Ross, since you've been north of the Arctic Circle, you strike me as a bit of a daredevil. I guess you could go with that. You think? Yeah. Scott, are you a daredevil? No, I'm not a daredevil. <laughs> I like, uh, just safe stuff. Yeah? <laughs> What's your favorite safe activity? <laughs> I really like the couch. Yeah. Staring in its own way. It's staring yeah. in its own way. I might way. fall in my own crevice. Who That's knows? right. That's right. All right. Your next challenge is a word game called Celebrity Sayings. Ross, what is an idiom that you've never understood? Brass tax. Brass tax. I don't even know if it's T A X or T A C K S. Oh, wow. Never thought about it as, as an actual tax on yeah. brass. Maybe that could be it, though. That, that could be it. Yeah. It's not a tax on brass, it's a, they're like thumb tax. Scott, what can we clear up for you? Um, what is an idiom you've never understood? Well, there's uh, when life gives you lemons, but there's also don't buy a lemon or you bought a lemon. So I, there's so much lemons. And yeah. I love lemons, so I just want all the lemons. <laughs> uh. All right, so if you're famous enough, you can get anything custom made just for you, including your own personal idiom. So in this game, we're going to give you the first part of a common expression. You have to give us the rest of the expression, but it's not that easy because you also have to end it with a rhyming celebrity's name. Sounds fun, right? Yeah, it's super fun. So let's go to our puzzle guru, Art Chung, to describe it more accurately. All right, here we go. If I said, hey, godfather of soul, you know when you throw your cape up in the air, what goes up, you'd answer, must come James Brown. Because the idiom is... What goes up must come down, and the godfather of soul, James Brown, rhymes with down. So complete the idiom. You both seem mad. It's going to be fine. Ross, you won the last game. If you win this, you're off to the final round. Scott, you need to win this, or you're going to be banished to the North Pole. Okay. It's not that bad. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, founding member of the Supremes, you got to keep on stepping because a rolling stone... Ross. Gathers no Diana Ross. Exactly. Yes. How easy was that, Ross? Well, I had a bit of a giveaway in my yeah, name. Yeah, you do. I know. I was thinking. He's got to get this one. Hey, member of Fleetwood Mac, you acted an American horror story at age 65, disproving that you can't teach an old dog. Scott? New Stevie Nicks. Exactly. <laughs> hey, lethal weapon actor, you should tell your partner Mel Gibson to never judge a book. Ross? By its Donald Glover. No, I'm sorry, we can't accept that. That is a, another person. Scott, can you steal? By its Danny Glover? <laughs> sorry, Donald Glover was in Community. <laughs> hey, actress who played Trudy Campbell on Mad Men, the apple doesn't fall far. And she was on Community. Scott. From the Allison Brie. Yes. It just came to you? I could only think of January Jones. And what rhymes with Jones? Nothing. Nothing. Not tree. Not tree. 
I figured out what it is about you, Scott. <laughs> you talk so clearly about things and precisely that I'm not used to it. <laughs> There's a way that is just very straightforward. It's comforting. Thank you. <laughs> Ross, we're like natural friends. This is a new thing for me. <laughs> hey, poet from Baltimore. When you wrote Murders in the Rue Morgue, you probably didn't think things were easy come. Ross. Easy Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Hey, Food Network chef, famous for his throwdowns, even a broken clock is right. Scott. Twice a Bobby Flay. Yes. <laughs> All right, this is your last clue. Hey, actress from Hannibal, still Alice, and the kids are all right. You know, all's fair in love. Scott. And Julianne Moore. You got it exactly. <laughs> Boy. All right, Puzzleguru Archung, how did our contestants do? That was a tough game, but congratulations, Scott, you've tied it up. <laughs> so you've each won one game apiece, so it's time for the tiebreaker game. I'm going to give you a category, and you'll go back and forth naming things that fall into that category. The first contestant to mess up, either by guessing incorrectly, repeating an answer, or taking too long, will be eliminated. You're going to buzz in to answer first. Your category is the 15 countries that partnered to build the International Space Station. <laughs> Ross, you go first. The U.S. That is correct. Scott. Russia. Correct. Ross. Japan. Correct. Scott. Australia. No, I'm sorry, that is incorrect. <laughs> Congratulations, Ross. You're moving on to the final round. Thank you, Scott. It's settled. Our finalists are Jake and Ross, and they will face off in our final round at the end of the show. If you spent the whole last game yelling out the answers with only the dim light of your computer screen illuminating your small basement apartment, come join us under the bright lights in a spacious industrial warehouse. <laughs> Fill out a contestant form at amatickets.org and get out of your hole. Coming up, Gillian Jacobs and Kate Micucci have no choice but to improvise the answers when we play one of our classics, This, That, or The Other. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. <laughs> Support for Ask Me Another comes from LearnVest. LearnVest is an online financial advice company focused on empowering people nationwide to make smart decisions with their money. If you want to know how to aggressively pay down your student loans, LearnVest can help with that. If you want to know how much you should put aside for savings or contribute to your retirement account, yep, they're on it. They'll create a custom financial plan, plus they'll pair you with a financial planner to help you keep on track. To see a sample plan and get a $50 credit, go to learnvest.com slash another. This is NPR's Ask Me Another. I'm Julian Villard, here with puzzle guru Art Chung. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Julian. Soon we'll find out which of our contestants, Jake or Ross, will be our big winner. But first, it's time to welcome our special guests. They star in the new film written and directed by Mike Birbiglia, Don't Think Twice. It's Kate Micucci and Gillian Jacobs. Hi. 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 Welcome, Kate. Welcome, Gillian. Now, Gillian, you wrote this great personal essay on Lenny uh, about your experiences at Juilliard. So for any parent who thinks their kid must go to Juilliard oh, for acting, what would you say to them? Uh, think about it. Think, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I've heard that the school is a kinder, friendlier place now than when I was there. So uh, I don't want to say don't go to Juilliard. Uh, that sounds like terrible advice, but... You know what? It was good preparation for this business because this is a very tough 
business where you have to have thick skin and be resilient, and I definitely learned that at Juilliard. I thought you made a, a great point of perspective where you were feeling very frustrated with the experience, and then you had a moment where you were like, that's right, no casting director is going to call up my teacher at Juilliard and be like, how strong was her neutral mask work? Yeah. <laughs> Which was a class. I didn't make that up for the essay. <laughs> they don't really care what your casting was like in your junior year of college, you know? It's right. Like, it's like you're not testing for a pilot, and they're like, hmm, well, they gave you the part of spear carrier number two in that production of Julius Caesar, so we wish we could give you the part, but we just can't. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I tried to really let go of that and not carry it with me going forward, but, you know, it's like those negative voices sometimes, they like to stay in your head. Well, I'm sure a lot of them have been quieted by your success in TV and film. And I'm sure, do you still have people coming up to you every day being like, get community back on the air? Yeah. Well, now we had this hashtag, which became a prophecy that was six seasons in a movie. And we... So we've done the six seasons, so now we have to do the movie. And I guess the latest news from Dan Harmon, the creator of the show, is he's waiting for us to be unemployed to write the script. So... <laughs> I don't know what the status is, but I think we'd all love to do it. Mm, good so. to know. Good to know. Now, Kate, people know you as the ukulele lady from Scrubs. They know you as half of the funny musical comedy duo Garfunkel and Oates. First of all, when did you start playing ukulele? I started playing the ukulele in the year 2000. That sounds so futuristic, saying it like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the year 2000. When um, I was in Hawaii for three months, kind of trying to figure out my life, not really sure what I wanted to do, and I was living on my aunt and uncle's porch. I was like, <laughs> I didn't even have a bed. I slept in a giant chair. What? Um, yeah, and it was great. And every morning I would see the cruise ships come in, and um, I grew up playing classical piano, and I was really missing having an instrument in Hawaii. And so my grandpa was also living there, and so he bought me my first ukulele and so that's when I started playing it. And what were your first songs about? The first ukulele song I ever wrote was called The Nap Song and it was how I wanted to uh, sleep with this guy but only, I only meant sleep with him and that's it. Okay. So then, I was a virgin when okay. I wrote it. <laughs> now you are in this film that deals with uh, an improv troupe and one of them has great success and it's sort of how the rest of them deal with that. As you're reading the script did any of it hit close to home? For sure. Yeah. You know, we play an improv comedy troupe, and so there's all the dynamics of jealousy and bitterness, but also celebration for your friends. And I think I've seen every variation of, of what the characters go through in my life. And thankfully, you know, I've had friends who are not performers see the movie and say, like, I'm a creative director at an ad company, and I totally relate to this movie. So I think it's applicable to a lot of jobs and professions where you're like, why'd that person get that? Right. And not me. And maybe, you know, it'll all work out in the end, but it's pretty tough in the moment. But you, you both had never done improv before. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so preparation to be in an improv troupe and make it seem believable for the film. What did you do? Well, it wasn't just that we had to be in an improv troupe. Kate and I had to perform alongside Keegan-Michael Key, Mike Birbiglia, and two legends of New York <laughs> improv, Chris Gethard and Tammy Sager. Right. So you, yeah. You basically, like, threw us on an NBA team and were like, this is a basketball, go. Um, it was really terrifying, yeah. you know, especially because we were doing shows around town as the commune, which is the name of our group in the movie, and we had just, you know, pretty much... There was no asterisk next to our name in the <laughs> program, like, they've never done improv before. Don't judge them too harshly. It was just like, Kate and I were clinging to each other, it just terrified. It was like, okay, well, we've done this for a few weeks, so here we go, everyone. And um, it was still Gil and I looking at each other like, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like it? Did you think I wanted to become part of an improv troupe? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't felt my heart race in terror like that in I don't know how long. You walk out with nothing, just your brain, and that's not enough. <laughs> I mean, did you find any strength of yours that you didn't know that you had before by doing these uh, improv scenes? I realized that I have a tendency to make weird, bold choices and then not really know what to do with them and just 
let them clean up my mess. That was my technique. There are some lines in the movie that you improvise that I couldn't believe they came out of your brain. Like, I was like, where, how? You're, it was really something to watch Gillian improvise. You're really, a, she's so natural. She really is. Ah, oh, Makuchi. Uh, <laughs> and now that you have built this rapport between the two of you, have you thought about going out uh, on a live performance tour together doing anything? At not improv. Um, <laughs> uh, I like how you keep stressing that, <laughs> Gillian. Nope. <laughs> but we could put an act together for sure. Sure. If it's scripted and somebody writes it and uh, we have rehearsals, uh, I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> All right. Well, I wouldn't say I'm going to hold your hand through this next one, but you are going to enjoy it. Are you up for an Ask Me Another Challenge? Woo! Yeah. All right. All right. Gillian, Kate, your movie, Don't Think Twice, is about New York City improv. Kate, you voiced Velma in a new version of Scooby-Doo. So that inspired us to create a version of one of our favorite games called This, That, or the Other, where we give you a name, and you just have to tell us which of three categories it fits into. And the categories are the name of an improv group that performed in the 2016 Del Close Marathon, the name of a restaurant in New York City? Or the name of a Scooby-Doo monster? <laughs> Great. Okay, so we're going to go back and forth. You don't need to buzz in. Uh, but if you get it wrong, the other person can steal. Ooh. And the winner is going to get an Ask Me Another Rubik's Cube. <laughs> I know, I know. Think about All it. All right. All right, here we go. Going down, Makuchi. <laughs> okay, we'll start with you. Okay. King Noodle. <laughs> Is it an improv group, a New York restaurant, or a Scooby-Doo monster? New York restaurant. That is correct. Yes. <laughs> Gillian, cheese monster. Improv group? Should be, but oh. I'm sorry you're incorrect. Kate, can you steal? I would say it's a Scooby-Doo monster. It is a Scooby-Doo monster, really? yes. <laughs> it's a giant humanoid made out of oozing orangey cheese. Kate, banana pancakes. Yeah. Improv group? <laughs> yeah, that's an improv group. <laughs> Gillian, this could change could it all. all change in an instant. Flex muscles. Flex muscles. Now, you can ask one question if you need to. About oh, that. I may? What, which, what's the answer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that was a good idea. That was a good idea. <laughs> well, okay, I'm going to think this through. Hers was just an improv comedy troupe. Yep. Flex Muscles? Flex Muscles. Probably not a restaurant. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't lived in New York in a while. Could be. Or what's my third option? Scooby-Doo Monster? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, that sounds like more of a command than a character <laughs> name. Yes, it does. Uh, I'll just go with improv comedy troupe. Sorry, that is incorrect. What is it? Kate, can you steal? Is it a Scooby-Doo monster? I'm sorry, it is a restaurant. What? What do they We're serve? out of the game. They serve, uh, they serve mussels. Oh, moo. Uh. You don't say. I love that I had to ask that question. <laughs> I know, it's terrible. Oh, it's terrible. Uh, I am not good at this. I was just this. thinking lots of protein, muscle milk. <laughs> All, right. All right, Kate, this is for you. Fish freaks. <laughs> New York restaurant, improv troupe. Improv troupe? It's a good idea for an improv troupe. I agree, but that is incorrect. Can you steal, Gillian? I guess restaurant. Sorry, that is incorrect. What? <laughs> there is what? That's a Scooby Doo villain. Fish yeah. freaks. Yeah, multiple it's a, freaks. Well, it's yeah. The, there's swimming green mutants with glowing green eyes who have this plan to cause an offshore oil spill that what? will wreak havoc on the environment. <laughs> That was before my time at Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah, man. I, I, I had no idea Scooby Doo. Now I'm taking pride in not getting any of these correct. I hope I don't get any of these right. <laughs> this is your final one, Gillian Doppelganger. Doppelganger, improv comedy troupe. That is correct. <laughs> I only wanted one. Yeah. Puzzleguru Archung, how did our special guest do? Oh, my God. <laughs> Congratulations, you both got some right. 
So we're going to give both of you Ask Me Another Rubik's Cube. Give it up for the stars of Don't Think Twice, Gillian Jacobs and Kate Micucci. And now we have a special treat. Kate is sticking around to play a song for us. Um, here's a little song called Have You Met My Robot? Have you met my robot? <laughs> Have you met my robot? He's a weird one, he's a funny one. He has soup cans for feet, and he dances around the apartment. And he sings to the things that he meets. He says la di da to the fish in the fish tank. Ho diddly hum to the coins in the bank. And he dances his dance steps accordingly. For that, Arthur Murray, he thinks. He's my best friend, some say that makes me crazy But I say, come on, we're both products of the 80s And if he falls apart, it's not a bother Cause I know how to glue, and I know how to solder I'm happy to fix him Have you met my robot? He's a weird one, he's a funny one He had salad tongs for hands Did I mention he's in love with a robot? He especially likes her cans. Those are her feet. <laughs> and together they walk, but not hand in hand. More like salad tong and salad tong, robot lady, robot man. And together they might have a baby. And together they might start a band. And it would sound like this. time for Kate Micucci. Now it's time to crown our big winner. Let's bring back our final two contestants, Jake and Ross. Puzzler Archung, take it away. Ross and Jake, your final round is called Easy Does It. Every answer will contain the letters EZ next to each other, though not necessarily at the beginning of the answer. So if I said it's an involuntary expulsion of air from your nose, you would answer sneeze. We're playing this round like a penalty shootout. You'll each get up to eight questions and we'll alternate back and forth. The contestant who scores the most points will be our big winner. Your prize will be an Ask Me Another Rubik's Cube, a Don't Think Twice poster signed by Gillian and Kate. And Kate has drawn an amazing illustration just for you. We flip the coin backstage and Ross, you're going first. Here we go. Ross, it's a candy that comes in a mechanical plastic dispenser with characters' heads on top. Pez. Correct. Jake, a short horizontal bar attached to the ends of two suspended ropes used in acrobatics. Trapeze. Correct. Ross, a French word for a meeting at an agreed time. Rendezvous. Correct. Jake, it's a round red hat with a flat top, no brim, and a tassel. A fez. Correct. Ross, this singer starred in Disney's Wizards of Waverly Place and the film Spring Breakers. <laughs> Ross is shaking his head, no answer. We were looking for Selena Gomez. <laughs> it's okay not to know that. <laughs> Jake, this actress won a Golden Globe for her role as Jane the Virgin. I knew Selena Gomez. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we were looking for Gina Rodriguez. Ross, it's the lowest balcony of a theater. Mezzanine. Correct. Jake, a wicked biblical woman, also a feminist blog. Um, three seconds. You clearly don't read Jezebel. <laughs> We're at the halfway point and Ross is in the lead, three to two. Ross. It's a selection of Greek or Middle Eastern dishes often served as an appetizer. Meza. Correct. Jake, it's the part of a ring or bracelet to which gems are attached. The Cortez? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> we were looking for bezel. 
Ross. It's Spanish for beer. Cerveza. True. <laughs> All right, Jack, here's the situation. Ross is in the lead five to two. If you get any of your remaining questions wrong, or if Ross gets any of his right, Ross will win the game. A French word meaning at the home of, often used in restaurant names. Chez. Correct. <laughs> Ross, if you get this right, you'll win the game. A four-sided figure that has two parallel and two non-parallel sides. <laughs> I know it's Three trapezoid. Correct. Congratulations. <laughs> You're a big winner. That was incredibly tense. Congratulations, Ross. Enjoy your prize. That is our show. Thank you so much for playing and for bonus games and stuff that's too hot for radio. Look us up on Facebook and Twitter. And subscribe to our podcast on Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher. Come see us live or be a contestant. Go to amatickets.org. Ask Me Another's Puzzle Guru is Art Chung. Hey, my name anagrams to Narc Thug. Our house musician is Julian Villard. Naive Beljar. Our puzzles were written by Natasha Lake and senior writers Kyle Beakley and Karen Lurie. Ask Me Another's produced by Mike Katzoff, Travis Larchuk, Julia Melfi, Denny Shin, Ramel Wood, and our intern Ashlyn Hatch, along with Anya Grunman. We are recorded by Bill Moss, Mike Cohn, and David Hurtkin. A special thanks this week to Patrick Conway. A crack wit pony. Ask Me Another was created by Eric Newsom and Jesse Baker. We'd like to thank our home in Brooklyn, New York, The Bell House. Hot Heel Blues. And our production partner, WNYC. I'm her ripe begonias. Ophira Eisenberg. And this was Ask Me Another from NPR. <laughs> Somewhere between the spark of a great melody and the top of the charts, there's a lot of work, and every musician, even the stars, have to do it. How does a musician sit down and write music? Well, you can journey into the creative process of stars like Alicia Keys and Miguel with Noteworthy, an intimate new documentary video series from NPR Music. Watch new episodes on Wednesdays at npr.org slash noteworthy. Next time on Ask Me Another, director Ira Sachs and actor Jennifer Ely talk about their new movie, Little Men. And when Jennifer's not acting, turns out she's raising chickens. Well, we only have two chickens okay, at the that's moment. Okay. That's okay. Um, we had seven two weeks ago, but um, something eight, five of them. Was it you? Did no. <laughs> Join me, Ophira Eisberg, for NPR's.